Hi guys, so this is another in the health and fitness series. This is about why I don't drink. First, I'm gonna go off and train and then I will get to the conversation after. There's a timestamp below on where that is. If you're new here, I'm Beth. I am a CrossFit athlete. I do a little bit of weightlifting. I was also on the TV series, SAS Who Dares Wins. If you like content about health and fitness, then please do subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you here. It's a great community and I just want to help as, in as many ways as I can. So I'm not going anywhere, so you may as well subscribe. <laughs> My main aims are just to help you find a happy, healthy version of yourself. Number two, Bethany, is paired with number one, James, who weighs 14 stone. So I'm about to set off to the gym for a bit of barbell club. I'm going to film a little bit of that today so that you can just see what I get up to in the gym. Obviously, we've just got back. It's um, in England. We've been in lockdown for the last month and I've just got back to training and it's affected my mental health so much not being in the gym. So I'm like super excited. It's like I've started CrossFit all over again. <laughs> but today is like barbell focused. So yeah, I think it'll be fun to watch. Today's video is about why I don't drink. If you want to skip to that part, then I'll put a timestamp in the description below but if you want to watch a little bit of me training first then keep watching i'm not going to do it like vlog style you'll just see a little bit of what we get up to at barbell and then i'll get on to the topic a little bit later let's head to the gym i train at tr4 i've just started training there it's awesome the coaches are amazing and yeah it's gonna be really good <laughs> so i'll see you there Pushing the limits, relentless. My passion is endless. Whatever the sun touches, I'm king of it. They threw dirt on my name, now they singing it. I'm everywhere, no way you forgot my face. I demand my place with the gods and greats. Could be crippled and blind, I stick with the grind. No one's stalling the climb, put it all on the line. Through thick and thin, I stay with the process. We're <laughs> dangerous conquest, addicted to progress. Dedicated to the hustle. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> which is where the, the control side of it comes yeah. in actually that connection with the bar the understanding of, if you can catch a bar at any point through your your squat yeah. then you're probably going to be elite right so that that learning that ability to catch parallel just above parallel in power deep squat because you've got a control you know where the bar needs to be to hit that point once you get that down that's easy yeah. world records Ooh. baby <laughs> Good. 
2008, good. Let's not shoot. I'm back from the gym, back from Barbell it was today, so that was, oh, it's just so good to be back at the gym. I really struggled, I posted quite a lot about it on my Instagram, but I struggled so much this time around with lockdown. It's been really hard not being able to go to the gym, and it, I've really, I've honestly just really, really struggled, so yeah, it's so nice to be back, and the coaches are so amazing at my new gym, I'm doing Barbell Club. I like weightlifting, I've done weightlifting for a long time, but it's so nice to have a Olympic weightlifting trained coach, not just a CrossFit coach, but somebody that is highly trained in Olympic weightlifting teaching me because I'm improving so much and you'll see in that little bit of a video, I'm not sure how much audio you get, but how many tips he gave me and how maybe my technique changed throughout the session and it was like an hour and a half session and I just feel like every time I go, I just improve so much and that's just like such an addictive feeling. I'm, yeah, I love it. Oh, it's just so nice to be back. So yeah, this video is going to be about why I don't drink <laughs> and why I'm not going to be drinking over Christmas. But I'm just going to go in, grab some lunch and then I'll chat to you in a bit, okay? <laughs> <laughs> 
Hi guys, so I hope you enjoyed that little bit of training that I did earlier. I'm gonna show some more of me training over the next couple of weeks now I'm back at the gym because I'm buzzing to be there, I love it. Probably more weightlifting stuff because honestly it's like, it's what I really love at the moment so I've always loved it, I've always loved weightlifting but I feel like I'm really getting somewhere as I've said so. On to the topic, so the reason why I don't drink. I stopped drinking, it was this year actually, I was drinking through the first lockdown, maybe the first few weeks, and then it may have been like June time-ish, or maybe before that, maybe March, I don't know. I decided enough was enough. For the last couple of years, I haven't really drank very much. I used to have like one or two big nights out a year and then like the odd one drink on a weekend because I knew that it wasn't really very good for me and my mental health when I drank regularly but over the last year or so I've noticed that it's not even okay when I drink like one or two and so I went away with some of the guys from SAS and we had like we had a few drinks I brought with me some bottles of Rattler and I had three pints and honestly, like, over the next week, I got really depressed, really sad. Obviously, I've got bipolar disorder and alcohol is a depressant. So anybody that does struggle with anything like depression could be really negatively affected by alcohol. And often, sadly, a lot of us would use it for a coping mechanism. So in my past, I have had, like, quite a bad time with drinking before. So I used to use alcohol to cope with feeling depressed back when I was undiagnosed. Um, I didn't realise that was bad for me, but when I was diagnosed, they said um, that I should try and avoid alcohol as much as possible, and I started to, but I still had these one or two, like, nights out, maybe three or four a year, and although, although it wasn't so bad, like, I would start to feel the beginnings of my mental illness come back, so, for me, alcohol is a big trigger for a manic episode, so my mood starts to go up, I start to talk really fast, get really excited, try and do all the things, like, I'll be really, like, one of those risk takers, like, or, like, dancing in the middle of the stage on a night out, like, I can be a proper party girl if I've had a bit of a drink and I started to not like that part of myself and not want to be that person anymore because I felt like it wasn't me, it was like a detached version of me because it is, the majority of that is my mental illness and I don't even remember some of the nights when I've been like that because I've been hypermanic and a lot of people that don't really understand bipolar disorder they just think that is mean, that I'm making those choices and being like that, that's who I am but it's not at all, that is my mental illness coming out and when my mood starts to escalate I become less in control of my actions and I don't like that at all so I realised that I need to stop doing these like binges essentially drinking like a couple a couple times a year so I started to really cut back on that and then this year I realised that it wasn't possible for me to have a couple of drinks in a night and I just struggled really badly after drinking I didn't suffer with the mania but I did suffer with the depression so I would be really depressed for at least a week and then it would come back to normal and I would tell myself that was a fair enough gamble that was a gamble I was willing to take to have a really good night out but then when it became like I was drinking less and less I realized that I didn't need those one to three drinks like one to three drinks isn't worth a week of depression like it's just not a good trade and I don't need them I like the taste of alcohol I liked how it made me feel but if you look at it across the day I liked how it made me feel for this portion of the day like a couple of hours after I'd had the drink and then for this portion of the rest of that that evening not being able to sleep very well into the next day awful like not worth it and then and then obviously a little bit of a hangover because I even get a hangover off like three three pints and then along from that I've got that tiny, what, couple of hour gap of good feeling and having a nice tasting drink and then a whole week of depression. Like, it's not worth it, so I just cut it out. <laughs> I mean, that's an easy, it's an easy decision to make for me. A really easy decision to make for me because I think anybody would make that decision. <laughs> 
So on top of it not being very good for my mental health, if you've been on this channel before, you'll know that obviously I do CrossFit, I compete in CrossFit. I've done stuff like SAS Who Does Wins. I really, I love performance. I love fitness. I love pushing myself, getting out of my comfort zone, but I also really love to be in control of that and of how I feel. And I really dial in my nutrition. I really monitor my sleep. I monitor everything using a thing called Whoop, which is this band on my wrist. And actually that was a big deciding factor in me not drinking because, so this Whoop band records um, your recovery. So it uses HRV. I'll put a link in the description to their website so you can see all of the science behind it. But essentially a lot of like NFL players in America use it loads of really top athletes use it and a lot of crossfitters now use it it measures your sleep and your recovery and your training strain but one thing i really noticed is alcohol even one drink hugely affected my recovery and i felt that as well that i didn't even need to look because i knew i felt so bad after having even one one glass of wine i felt horrendous yeah i knew i didn't i didn't want that <laughs> but i remember that day after seeing my friends from the SES, i checked my whoop and I had 3% recovery that's the worst recovery I've ever had and I've had whoop for like a year now and that's the worst recovery I've ever got and then the day after as well it hit something like 5% normally like a bad day for me is like 30% <laughs> so like 3% is horrendous and then I've never had that problem since not drinking either so yeah it, so it massively affects my athletic performance and then when it starts to affect my training and my motivation to train and my ability to train it starts to then affect my mental health because my training is something that I used to really cope with my mental health and it's something that I used to help me stay on track so it's a double whammy it affects my mental health in the first place and then it affects my training which then affects my mental health again <laughs> it's just not worth it is it yeah and then it starts to affect my sleep and then my sleep when my sleep gets affected that is another thing which starts to affect my mental health again so um, for me lack of sleep triggers a manic episode too and then everything will just start to spiral out of control and once I've realized that it's spiraling it takes me quite a long time to get back on track and implement all of my self-management techniques so yeah it's really hard and honestly it's not something that I want to be doing like if I don't drink then I don't need to think about that I don't need need to I don't need to get back on track because I've not come off track <laughs> yeah nightmare so that's essentially why I don't drink <laughs> and this year is going to be the first year where I won't have drank through Christmas and it is something that I'm a bit anxious about because my family some of my family like they know I don't drink but they might be like oh you could just have one and the just the one thing just have one that is it really affects me <laughs> so no I can't just have one because if I just have one it'll affect my mental health and sometimes and a lot of the reasons why I did drink before was peer pressure and it does affect me and how often I will have been peer pressured into drinking because or to just have one because they don't realize the effect it'll have on me they think oh one is nothing but it is and one is a lot for me it actually has a huge effect on me so it is it's not just one it's one week of depression I'm not gonna trade it for one glass of wine to make somebody else feel comfortable and like my family are actually great so I'm, I've planned to just speak to them about it and say look I'm not drinking I don't drink anymore I'm not gonna drink forever <laughs> like it's just not worth it and they understand my mental health so hopefully they'll take it on board but often it's people I don't know so I'll say I don't drink and they're like oh why don't you drink and I feel like it shouldn't be a topic of conversation like surely my choices are my choices and a lot of the time I find that people want me to drink because they want to be more comfortable because they feel uncomfortable with somebody around them that maybe doesn't drink. I'm just as relaxed when I drink and when I don't drink I'm me, I'm the same me like I mean my mood escalates but that's bad, that's not a good thing. I think people want you to drink so that they feel more comfortable drinking but there's never any judgment from me if other people want to drink they can drink like my partner still drinks it's not a thing gosh my hair's such a mess <laughs> it's just something that I can't do anymore and that should be fine right <laughs> I'll keep you updated on how I deal with like the peer pressure and stuff around not drinking but honestly I don't really go out anymore like I go out for like meals and stuff I really enjoy food 
I, yeah, I, I, I'm not really a party girl anymore, I used to be, but that part of me is long gone and I just don't feel like that person. Now I love sport and competing is my, like, fun time, like, I really enjoy that and I love an early night and I don't, it doesn't appeal to me to stay up late anymore, so, sorry guys. <laughs> There's a few things that I'm implementing that's gonna help me cope with Christmas and the drinking side of things. So I, I'm not gonna stay away from like alcohol flavored stuff. So I mean, I'm gonna play this by ear because I'm not sure if it will affect me, but as far as I know, when alcohol is cooked, a lot of the alcoholicness comes out of it right i mean let me know in the comments below if i'm wrong and i'm gonna fall into a trap of becoming really depressed over christmas because i'm gonna eat alcoholic cake but <laughs> let me know i don't know maybe so my plan is to still eat food that has some form of alcoholic content but if it's like really strong alcohol then obviously i won't eat it but yeah and then my other plan is i've got a few drinks signed up that i'm gonna drink one thing i'm gonna try and make and if i do make it i might share this with you guys is i really want to make a alcohol free baileys because i haven't found one yet and i love baileys it's like my favorite thing at christmas so so i've discovered this new drink lately it's amazing and three spirits they're so good for sending me this like thank you guys for sending me these because honestly like i didn't know stuff like this existed it's the coolest thing ever so i've got the bottles here i'll show you what they are and this is what i've been drinking recently so this i think it's so cool because they're supposed to make you feel a certain way so a lot of people drink because it makes them feel more sociable more lively like that kind of thing or they drink something to settle them down this is supposed to do this but without having the alcohol content so this one is the livener I love the the design of the bottles too, they're really cute. So this is, on the back it says the party starter, naturally invigorating, exotic and fiery. They, they are pretty fiery, like quite spicy, which I like, but not like hot spicy, like, you know that burn that you get from whiskey? That's what it reminds me of, I love it. And they've got loads of good stuff in them, so like English beet sugar, watermelon, pomegranate, extracts of hibiscus, guava leaf, some things I can't pronounce, ginseng, well that's good for you isn't it, green tea, caffeine, so that's obviously what will help make you lively, black carrot, apple cider vinegar, really interesting stuff and on their website they've got ways you can make cocktails out of them. So this one is one of my favourites at the moment, when I first tried it I wasn't really sure, I think because I didn't know what to expect, um, this one is the social elixir and this one to me reminds me of wine and it's actually funnily enough there's the mood booster on the back enhanced with lion's mane mushroom that's interesting yeah bittersweet with a curious savory bite it is curious it's an interesting one but i'm so obsessed this is actually it was my least favorite and now it's my favorite i think because i've been drinking it i've got used to the flavor of it um, but it reminds me the most of red wine that sort of like dry bitterness that you, i can imagine you can have it with a steak so again like lots of botanical extracts yeah mushroom that's cool cacao bean green tea passion flower coconut vinegar black carrot again lots of antioxidants lots of vitamins so they're really good for you but they also taste like they're an alcoholic spirit so i've got um three more of these bottles on order i've bought uh, like a crate of them for Christmas because this is going to be my drink. I'm so excited. And then the next one I've got is the nightcap. So there's three of them and they're all different. And this one is supposed to help you sleep, which is really cool. So it's like a whiskey that you'd have before bed. I can't remember if it tastes like whiskey. Oh. Yeah, this one's a spicy one. Very really spicy. But like it's like a whiskey, like a like that fiery. Oh, it's so good. So the dream maker blended with tree sap. You can definitely taste the tree sap. It's like syrupy, like kind like well, sweet but spicy. So oh maple syrup, yeah, you can definitely taste the maple syrup. Botanical extracts again, turmeric. That's really good for you. Ashwagandha. That is really good for sleep, which kind of explains why I've been sleeping well after I drank this. White willow bark, vanilla loads of things that are really good for you again antioxidants basically three bottles and they're all like spirit size 50 
50 centiliters and that's going to be my Christmas drink. I'm going to have those. You can make the nightcap one like a hot toddy. So I don't know if you're any of you in Northern, but I'm not sure that's a Northern thing, but my Northern family love a hot toddy. So that's like a whiskey with like a bit of lemon and then some hot water. And it's like really warming, really good for you if you've got cold. Yeah. So you can make one of those. You can make loads of cocktails with them, which when we've got the new kitchen in the new house, I might do a little bit of a tutorial on making some of their cocktails. But yeah, if you want to buy any of those, I'll put the link in the description if you're I'm not sure if they're good for people that are pregnant but my sister's currently pregnant so she's not going to be drinking at all at Christmas either so if they are if they're okay for people that are pregnant then maybe she could have some of those too but um I'm sure they are I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be maybe some of the herbs though I don't I mean you can't eat prawns when you're pregnant so I don't really understand it but so that's going to be like my spirit replacement over Christmas and they're good for you as well so they just you just feel like homey and warm and all of those things that you need from alcohol without actually having the alcohol and then my other substitute because I love a mulled wine and I will really miss mulled wine is I really like hot squash and Ribena have brought out the winter spice hot squash which I really love. I've had that in like previous Christmases. I used to I used to be a jeweler, um, weird one. I'll get onto that on a video at some point because I've got a whole story of my life behind that part of it. But yeah, I used to be a jeweler and I, when I used to ho host my open studios, I would have mulled wine and I'd also have a non-alcoholic version of mulled wine and I would use the Ribena winter fruits for that. So that's gonna be my mulled wine replacement. I love that already. I know I really like it. So yeah, <laughs> everyone else is gonna be smashing down the alcohol and I'm just gonna be really hydrated, <laughs> which is great for my athletic performance really good for my mental health so it's a win-win really but i hope that's helped some of you and if you do need like a little bit of motivation to stop drinking like there are people like me that do it there's things out there that can help you don't have to give up all the pleasure of drinking like i really honestly the reason i drink is because i like the taste of alcohol so i don't need to look for that anymore because i've got things to replace that taste and there's non-alcoholic wines and stuff out there i've tried quite a lot of them and they're actually really okay like they taste like wine I didn't really taste any different but the only problem with them I found is they still made me feel a bit bleh, like I'm just a bit bad and I think that was because of maybe the sugar content in them I don't know those three spirit drinks they make me feel better than I would if I hadn't drank them which doesn't um hopefully that makes sense yeah they make me feel like more sociable or more calm or like like they've just given me a bit of a kick or they just give me like and I'm not sure if it's because I'm really sensory but they just make me feel really chill if I like have them like over a bit of ice like when I'm all cozy and um when we have like a night in with a movie on they just make me feel really warm and like like you're having a whiskey like with your family or something like that feeling that warm and fuzzy feeling so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it gave you a little bit of an insight into how you can maybe imp implement some of these ideas into not drinking i hope it helped you understand me a little bit more <laughs> and the reasons why i don't drink i think it's important to share these things because there might be someone out there like me listening to me maybe talk about the reasons I don't drink they might think that's true for me and it might change something in them and then they realize that maybe not drinking will really help them too so yeah and I know lots of you are curious about it so <laughs> I thought I would just do a little video so if you like the channel if you enjoy this like health and fitness series that I'm doing at the moment please do subscribe drop me a comment below if you've got any other questions or if you've got any suggestions for videos that you would like me to make as part of this series because I reply to all of the comments so thank you for coming guys and I will see you in the next one <laughs>